Goldman Sachs, you heard about this yesterday because we told you about it, sent a large number of erroneous trading orders into the options market early yesterday, roiling prices and potentially costing the firm more than $400 million. Does this remind you of anything? It should. This mishap bears a scary resemblance to the errors that brought down Knight Capital just one year ago. Knight, of course, is much smaller than Goldman, but how much risk are the markets facing as electronic trading increasingly dominates our financial system? With us now, Edgar Perez. He's author of the new book, Nightmare on Wall Street, as in K-N-I-G-H-T, with a very scary cover, my goodness, <laughs> and an expert on high-speed trading. In fact, you wrote this other book, which has done very well, called The Speed Traders, and I find this fascinating. This has been a good seller, especially since high-frequency trading has started to rear its head in ways that do end up hurting individual investors, correct? It ends up hurting everybody who is involved in these trades. If you look at the case of Nike Capital, shareholders definitely paid a price for that 70 percent dilution definitely that was the price that they paid. let's go to what happened yesterday Goldman Sachs and as we understand it, it there were a flood of erroneous trades uh, system programming error so so far they're not saying it was a human so-called fat finger trade how similar is this to what happened at night there are a lot of similarities between what happened with night capital and Goldman first of all usually in systems in development you always try to put some systems in place let's guess what the days before this incidents in both cases night and Goldman they had changed in the systems and unfortunately testing probably wasn't thoughtful enough that they were able to assume that everything is going to work in the parameters mm -hmm. so in the case of Goldman on Monday they made some changes to the pricing of the option system in the case of night capital also they implemented some changes the day before the implementation of the RLP the retail liquidity program instituted by NICE. So the similarity is definitely very clear between these two incidents. With Knight Capital, for those of you who don't remember, it, it really threatened the existence of that firm. They had to be bought out by Getco, mm -hmm. and for a minute there, the whole thing could have gone under. Now, while it's a lot smaller, do you, do you foresee any, is, is it an overstatement even to, to venture that something like that could happen at Goldman Sachs? 450 million, by the way, to Knight brought it down. 410 million to Goldman Sachs, again, not very much at all in the grand scheme of things. Definitely different things, as you mentioned, indeed. The case of Goldman is a company that makes $3 billion per quarter. Knight Capital, in contrast, they only made $3 million in quarter. So it's a huge difference between these two companies. For Knight Capital, for $440 million was much more than the cash position they had that quarter before. Well, For Goldman, it was $100 million. They, they are expecting to lose around $80 million per month. That's the VRA, the value of rates. So really, it's a running error for them. Talk about the grand at 30,000 feet picture here, and that is that high-frequency trading, these gigantic servers and algorithmic trades that enable some organizations who have the money to shave pennies and get that much more sort of a head start on trades how this is dangerous to the world out there again we are all for the free market and if there's a smarter better mousetrap great somebody came up with it and they should be rewarded for that but is it dangerous to the market i think hft high speed trading is a tool the way we use the tool can be very dangerous in the same way that we drive automobiles mm -hmm. and sometimes from time to time we have accidents What's the role? How can we can avoid this? Yes, there's a danger there, but there has to be control. There has to be mechanisms in place that regulators will look after so to make sure that these incidents don't happen again. This is something that regulators can do. As you know, if there's going to be a technology change, regulators probably are going to be the last ones to go ahead into this game. If there is a, a silver lining for Knight Capital, it's that they weren't bailed out. In fact, mm -hmm. the free market absorbed them, and that's great. I just worry that if an organization as big as maybe one of the gigantic financials mm -hmm. out there, if this were to happen and really sort of spiral out of control for a JP Morgan or a Goldman Sachs, I and everybody in, on this set and, and out there mm -hmm. on 6th Avenue, nobody wants to, to bail anybody out anymore. Could it come to that? We hope that the Volcker rule is going to be implemented and anybody doing proprietary trading mm -hmm. would definitely have the owners and shareholders pay for that if there's any mistake. You're right. That was Nike Capital. The shareholders paid a price for that. In the case of Goldman, that should be stopped. Ghosts in the machine. <laughs> oh boy. High frequency <laughs> trading is a story that's not going away. The book is called Nightmare on Wall Street. I have to say, who did the cover art here? We have an amazing <laughs> designer and we thought a lot about it. But you see Nasdaq, NICE, Night, it has everything. Well, well, good for you, and everybody should go and buy this book. Edgar Perez is the expert on high-frequency trading. Thank, Thank you very much, Liz.